Hey guys, this is going to be a new demo video in FMOD. This time it's going to be for some orchestral epic pirate music I did for a video game. And I think the game, we used some of the code from this. But let me just go over what we have here. We have sort of like this intro loop. So let me see if we can pull up the assets here. There we go. We have our intro. Let's see what else we have here. We have, uh, I guess, this chorus type part with uh, chord progression at the bottom. And I do have some of these French horn rips. Let's see here. Crash cymbals. Some of the loops actually needed this. Um, going back to the source source material, some of them didn't have it. So I actually put them in here where they were needed to make sure everything didn't sound too abrupt. And we're actually going to be using the grid here. These jump transitions are really what we're going to talk about today. Um, let me see what else we have really quick. Oh, okay. So we have this sort of loop. And then we have a variation of that, which is um, a little more intense. It has more percussion. And we actually do, we're going to have a knob for that. So this is actually going to be jump transitions, um, the cutoff filter, um, crossfading transition we saw in the Fall of Arcana video, which is sort of a little advanced technique. And we do have crossfading layers occurring while we have these jump transitions. So this is pretty much a combination of everything we've seen previously from the Artemis demo video and the Fall of Arcana video. And don't worry, I'll put these links in the description. And like always, there will be a tutorial on this demo. I'm just sort of demonstrating what's going on here, not really going in depth on how to do this. So let's get started. Let's just start here in the beginning. Now this will loop. This will loop over and over again until we tell it to go somewhere else. So I have this transition knob which controls where this is going to jump to. So let's jump to this uh, first section here. Uh, let me see if we can zoom in a little bit. Alright, here's section one. Let's jump to section one. So this is actually going to loop over and over again, but remember, like I said, there are crossfading layers between this one. So check this out. This has its own crossfading layer within itself. Let me turn this up. Now we can go back. Let's go somewhere else. Section two. Or, sorry, that one. So let's do that one more time. So now we're in section two. This also has this sort of intensity level knob. Now we're going to move on to the last and final section, which is like this sort of chorus-y sort of sounding refrain, like there's, a, there's actual harmony going on, there's a chord progression, uh, there's a range uh, legato strings, so let's go to that. Let's turn the intensity level down back to where it was. And now, let's go to the more intense section here. Listen to that uh, chord progression in the lower strings.
and the intensity knob will actually activate or fade in the loop with this, the high register strings. So look at this, check this out. And of course we can transition back to whichever loop we want to go back to. And we have all of this on the grid and in time, like I said, we have a tempo marker. It's important because they're not jumping right away. They're actually jumping on a specific beat. But let's say you want to um, have a lose or win scenario. That can happen at any moment. So that will jump to it right away. So I have a lose and win knob, which tells the loop to go to either the lose music or the winning music. So let's actually go to the lose music for a second here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn one of the knobs all the way to the left to go to the lose music. And that's where it ends because it sustains all the way there and doesn't go back to anything else. And this whole thing will just pretty much be reset. Now let's start on that same section two right here, or section one, it doesn't matter where it is, and let's try the winning one. Now, it might seem a little bit ab abrupt, but the, these lose and wins were just, um, they were created to work with these, but it helps also to understand that the music is complementing what's on screen. Um, it does sound slightly abrupt, a little bit too abrupt for me, um, but these are designed to make it not as abrupt. And when you're looking at something on screen like you actually get killed, it would um, sound just fine with what's going on on screen. Now, there's one more level of this transition thing here and it's the suspense action cue. So what happens is if we bring the transition knob all the way up it'll trigger a suspense cue which is just horns and it actually fits well with the music. The suspense thing, um, the suspense cue will play all the way through and go right back to the intro. So if you look here this suspense does not um, have any of the transition regions, and it'll go straight back to the intro loop. So let me trigger a suspense event cue in one of these loops. I think we're, let's do section two if we can do that. Let's see if it'll play section two. <laughs> and what I'm going to do is bring the transition knob all the way up. See, uh, to suspense, it's when this knob goes all the way up, it's going to go to the suspense. All right, so you see how that worked? It played the suspense, it went back here, and because the transition knob was at this point from the intro loop, it'll go back to section two. And that's okay, that's, this, this totally works fine. And it depends on the game, you can actually tell to go back where it left off, and that's something you do in programming of your game. And there's one more level of suspense, it actually plays this secondary suspense line. It's a little bit longer, but this might be something that's happening in the game. But first, let's see this one more time before we do that. Okay, let's do the more full suspense is what I said. That, that's what I called it. And let's see. This actually has its own knob to activate it. So this has to be all the way up to activate that. So it's going to go to this full suspense loop here, which can loop, but it's not going to loop because it's going to go straight to the suspense and then back here. So it's pretty much like one more step it has to do. Let's see what that sounds like. We're going to turn this knob all the way up. Okay, sorry, this knob was still there. I forgot it. You have to leave it back off. 
let's do it one more time. And sorry, next time I'll bring this back to where it was. It's only supposed to happen once. <laughs> Now I had full control over if I'm allowed to go to suspense from this intro loop and as you can see it says to section one to string chorus section two win and lose there's no suspense so the suspense can only happen in these not this one so if I actually turn this all the way up it's not gonna go to that suspense loop or the suspense uh, trumpet horn thing so if I play this it can't go to it because this does that doesn't exist in this loop region. So if we start in section one, oh, sorry, section two, because it wants to go there. The suspense knob, the suspense parameter exists here. So when I turn this all the way up, this activates and will go to suspense. So let's see that work again one more time. And this track, this is the special thing about this track. Remember we were talking about um, resonance filters and cutting off filters, the low pass sort of effect. Um, I have that on here too, but at any given point, it, can, it has this underwater um, music loop. Let me just play this for you. Um, it should be underwater loop. Here we go. So let's say you're playing on a pirate ship and you jump in the water and it gives this effect of jumping in the water and that effect comes from the cutoff filter and what, while the other tracks are cutting off, this underwater music track uh, fades in. So let's actually just play this from, I like section, I like section one, let's do that. So you jump into the water. and you play this sort of music. Kind of sounds like you're underwater, and that's kind of the point. And let's say you jump back up onto the ship out of the water. Let's do that one more time. Now the cool thing about this, it's under every single track. And since the ostinato and the music is sort of really similar to these uh, original, original tracks here, this can happen to under any music track. So let's do this chorus section. here too in the beginning intro loop so while I was making this other source source track for the underwater um, I was pretty much just using the same notes the same um, sort of orchestration technique and I just kind of changed the instruments out and kind of made something sound like, you know, sort of uh, peaceful, calm underwater music because I guess underwater things seem to be more calm and that cutoff filter kind of emulates that sound, you know, you hear when you jump into the water. So one more time, let's just hear that. So it's already built into this source track that that effect is already there. Kind of sounds like you're underwater. And that's it for this uh, demo. This track was called Black More Tides. It's for an upcoming game. And stay tuned for the tutorial video on how I did some of this stuff. This one is a little bit tricky, so I suggest you 
watch some of the older tutorials that I did um, for the previous videos because they kind of go over the basics. This one is kind of a mix of everything that we talked about so far. Um, and also stay tuned for more. I think I'm going to have um, more complex sort of sort of projects that are similar to this one and other techniques. There's way more you can do with FMOD. It's pretty powerful. And I suggest you guys try it out, I even if you're not interested in sort of this thing. It's really fun to mess with, and it can get you thinking of the mindset of making video game music. So until then, thanks. <laughs>